Praise the Lord. God bless you all. Hope you guys are doing well. We thank God for uh, a brand new day, for his strength, for his mercy, for his goodness, for the fact that he's with us. Although we may not understand everything that's going on in our lives or in other people's lives, we thank the Lord because God is good and the Bible says his mercy is forever. And so I pray that you feel strong today, that you are strengthened by the Lord, that the Lord is guiding your steps and that the Holy Spirit is with you. Um, we also honor God because we understand that he's the one that gives us the ability to be able to move on and do all the things that he asks us to do. We know that uh, God is sovereign. God continues to be on his throne regardless of the circumstances that you and I are going through. That does not diminish God's power. We may not understand why God allows what he allows, but we do understand that God is all powerful. Um, so to make sure that you can hear me and see me, please just Put on the chat there that you are able to hear me and see me so that I can know that uh, that this is all working fine. You know how, how computers are. They have a mind of their own. But again, we thank the Lord. God is good. God is good. And, I'll, and I'll, I'll repeat what I've said in the past. God is good whether we're going through good times or bad times. We make a huge error when things go well for us and we say God is good. In the same way, when things go bad for you, say God is good. Because he's good whether things are looking good for us or looking bad for us. He remains on his throne. He remains sovereign. He remains all-powerful. He's omnipotent. He's omniscient. He is, everything in the world is present to him. So praise his holy name. Thank you, Lillian. So we praise God because he's with us. God bless you all, those that are online already. Lillian, uh, Marisol, and the Lord bless you guys. Be with you. Uh, I think there's someone else online. I can't. I don't know who they are, but praise the Lord again for his love, for his mercy, for, for what he continues to do in our lives, for his strength, and for the fact that God cares for us. And so we're going to honor him today. In just a little while, I'm going to begin um, preaching. The title of this sermon is going to be, or is, No Worries. <laughs> I'm going to repeat that. No Worries. Could you imagine having no worries? Well, the Bible tells you. Not to worry. Now, how 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 do we how do we deal with that? How do we translate that when the fact is that we have many reasons to be worried? Yeah, there's there's uh, so many things going on in our lives. This pandemic continues. Political elections coming up. Uh, winter is coming and flu season uh, and other things. So we we understand that we are living in precarious times. There's a concern about the um, schools being shut down again. Some schools have been shut down in Queens and Brooklyn. I go out to work every day and go to the school and some of my coworkers are in the building. The building is basically empty of students. There's about three to four staff members for every child that comes into the building. So praise God for that. And at the same time, um, there, there is safety at home. But again, I firmly believe that wherever the Lord allows us to go or where he sends us, well, he's going to protect us in those places because God is with us. So we honor the Lord. We praise the Lord. We thank the Lord because we know uh, God is in control of all of our circumstances. Although it might look like things are not going well. Well, God is in control. Well, praise the Lord. Again, God bless you all. Let me see who I see here. Marisol and Lillian, Maritza, Heidi, and my, uh, my cousin from Puerto Rico, Luz. God bless you. It's a pleasure to have you here. Again, we thank God. Because he's the one that moves us, and we should not be easily moved. If anyone's going to move you, it should be God that moves you. And what I mean by that, not from one location to another location, but the one that makes you tremble. The one that, that brings something up in your spirit that strengthens you. That, well, that's the power of God. The Bible says in the book of Isaiah that God honors the one who trembles at his word. You know what that means? That, <coughs> excuse me. That you're so consumed with God's presence, with God's word, with the, the truth of what God has written, that you understand that you have to bow before it, that that word guides you, that that word strengthens you. God bless you, Marcos. And so again, we praise God, we honor God, we love God, we thank God, because God is not doing things in a vacuum. You and I are affected by the things that God is doing. And we need to know that if you're really going to trust in God, that means that you're going to put a blind eye or turn a blind eye to some things that are going on around you. Because you're going to say, no matter that this is going on or that is going on, if God has promised 
that is going to care for me, well, I'm going to stand on the promises of God in spite of what my eyes see. So focus on the Lord and be strengthened by the Lord on this day. So again, the title of today's sermon is No Worries. Now, what is worry? Well, we, we can translate, uh, uh, interpret that word to mean so many different things. Worry is when you're concerned about something or overly concerned about something. When you can't sleep at night because you're, you're, con you're, you're confused about what's happening with your child or you're concerned about your health or you look at the economy and you say, oh my God, I saved all this money and my, go my money's going out the window. So you get worried. Another word might be anxious. All of these things have to do with us focusing on the things that are coming against us rather than focusing on the fact that God is in control, that God loves us, that in, I'm going to quote some Bible verses in just a little while, that in spite of negative situations in the economy and negative situations in this world, God has promised to care for his servants. And yet, and yet, if it were time for you to go, if the Lord says, today is your final day on earth, you have a better place to go to. So don't hold on too tightly to this world either. We're all going to go sooner or later. And so be focused on the fact that God has promised that he will care for you from the day of your birth to the day of your death and then beyond that to an even greater degree. Dr. Tony Evans, one of my favorite preachers, you should uh, tune into him on YouTube. He's uh, a pastor out, I believe, in Texas. And he has a ministry called The Urban Alternative dealing with uh, socioeconomic situations out in his state. Also a pastor of Oak Cliff um, Bible Church, I believe. And wonderful, wonderful um, preacher. Just wrote a, a Bible and a commentary to the Bible, which I might be picking up. He said, today is the tomorrow that you worried about yesterday. I'm going to repeat that. Today is the tomorrow that you worried about yesterday. What does that mean? Yesterday, you had some anxiety. You were worried. You didn't know what was going to happen. And some of us focused on the next day. So it was Saturday and we're thinking about what's going to happen on Sunday. And today's Sunday. What's going to happen on Monday? But the Bible tells us, why are we worrying about what might happen tomorrow when we not, may not even make it to tomorrow? Why not focus on today? And I'm going to get to that at the end of the sermon where Jesus lets us know, hey, today has enough trouble of its own. Why are we opening up these cans of worms about what's going to happen tomorrow if we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow? We don't even know if we're going to step into tomorrow. Focus on today. So if you were anxious about something yesterday and you're saying, I hope tomorrow comes, well, here is tomorrow. So praise God that you slept through the night, you woke up this morning, and here you are. Psalm 34, I'm sorry, Psalm 37 verse 4 says this. Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. What does that mean? When you delight yourself in something, that means that you enjoy it, that you take pleasure in it, that you are happy in it. And so God tells us by means of the psalmist in Psalm 37 verse 4 that we need to take delight in God. What does that mean? You know what happens? We often take delight in the things that God gives us rather than in God himself because we're basically selfish. We want and we want and we want and we get and then we don't like what we got and then we return it and then we want something else because that's who we are. Now, that's not that's not necessarily a bad thing. Well, being selfish is a bad thing, but wanting things is not a, is not a problem. It's not a bad thing. But what happens if you ever see the show Hoarders, for example, when you have so many beautiful things that you cannot distinguish between one and the other? What have you done? You've made a mess. Now, although you have many beautiful things, none of them catches the eye because they overwhelm you. They drown you. They take joy away from you rather than giving you joy. And the psalmist is telling us here in Psalm 37, verse 4, that when we delight ourselves in God, in God, not in the things that God gives us, He will then give you the desires of your heart. What does that mean? It means that, first of all, you have to focus on God. You have to seek God. You have to immerse yourself in the person of God. How do we do that? The only way I know how to do that is getting into the Word of God, reading the Bible, what God has written. If you want to know a person, right, you have conversations with that person. If you want to know uh, how, what a person writes, an author, for example, well, you read the author's books, and you like them or you don't like them. 
But here, in this case, God is pointing us to the fact that he has written one massive book, the Bible, which has 66 smaller books within it. And all of those books taken together give us the whole counsel of God. They explain to us who God is and demonstrate to us how much he loves us by what he does in that book. So we can get principles from the Bible through what is written. And I put in my notes here. Our problem is that we have so many delights that we feel we do not need to delight in God. In other words, we have so many other things to delight in that God becomes an afterthought. We are enjoying this present life so much that we stop living for the next one. Wow, we get a little bit too happy down here. We have become so earthly minded that we forget that we are heaven bound. And you know how some people are doing, right? They are amassing stuff. They are collecting things. And guess what? Solomon says in the book of Ecclesiastes that you don't know who you're collecting for. You're going to enjoy it for some time and then someone else is going to get it. And you know what some of them are going to do? They're just going to throw away what you collected. They're just going to get rid of it. They're not going to care that you loved it, that you honored it, that you cherished it, that you cleaned it, whatever it was that you have. They are going to say, hey, this is good for a few bucks. Let me sell it. So keep that in mind. Don't hold on to this world so tightly. Understand that we are heaven bound. Now, that means that we could still live in this earth another 50 years, another 30 years, another 20 years, another 10 years, whatever amount of time God has allowed it to us. We should be mindful of our days, as uh, Moses tells us in Psalm 90, that we should have a heart of wisdom. Because we don't know when we're going to go to the presence of God. But all of us at some point are going to meet eternity. And there we will stand before God. Some for eternal joy. And the Bible says some for eternal torment. Not able to be in the presence of God. Yet recognizing that God exists. So just keep that in mind as I speak about no worries. We shouldn't be worried about that. If you have put your hand in the hand of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, you're safe. But what does that mean? That you're also seeking to live a life that honors him. You're not doing your own thing. You're looking for him. Jeremiah chapter 17, verses 7 and 8 says this. Blessed is the man, and that means the person, but it says the man, who trusts in the Lord and has made the Lord his hope and confidence. He is like a tree planted along a river bank with its roots reaching deep into the water. A tree not bothered by the heat nor worried by long months of drought. Its leaves stay green and it goes right on producing all its luscious fruits. Isn't that fantastic? What Jeremiah and Jeremiah is called the crying prophet, the lamenting prophet, because he wrote lamentations later on. He was in constant grief over the sins of the nation of Israel. But here, he hears the voice of God, and God is telling him, this is the person who's blessed, who trusts in me, who makes me their hope, and makes me their confidence. That person, you know who that person is going to be like? And this alludes back to Psalm chapter 1, which talks about a person who, who honors God being like a tree planted along the waters that gives its fruit in its season and its leaf does not wither and all that he does prospers. Jeremiah is letting us know that the person who trusts in the Lord is like a tree that's planted along a river. And so the drought comes and guess what? Because that tree has flung its roots deep into the earth. They, they, its thirst is quenched by that river. And what happens? It could be many months where things are not going well. The sun is beating upon it. The grass is withering. But because its roots have gone deep into the ground and are able to reach the river, it's not concerned. Its leaves stay green and it keeps on producing fruit. Although you can't tell how it's producing this fruit. And you wonder, how can this person, let's bring it back to, to people. How can this person continue to produce fruit when they're going through this negative time? You know why? Because they're trusting in God. 
How can a person who's dying continue to worship the Lord? Why? Because they're trusting in God. That is God's expectation of us. That we're not just saying, I love you, Lord, when everything is good. As I mentioned before, when everything is good. Oh, God is good. God is good. God is good. When everything is bad, what do you do? Curse him? No, no, no. When everything is bad, you need to say, God is good. God is good. God is good. Because we can't choose when to worship God. We worship him when it's good and we worship him when things are bad because he's the same God he doesn't change the book of James says that there's no eclipse in him there's no shadow of variation he remains God regardless of our circumstances so honor him today no worries means that we side with God and his word taking it as full truth and acknowledging that he will accomplish all he says if there's anyone that keeps his word that is God. We stop believing the lies of the devil and society and we begin to breathe in God's truth. That means you trust in God. When you stop believing what people are saying around you, even in the, politi in the political realm where people make up, they fabricate history. Don't stress that. Focus on God. Don't worry about this person saying that, this person saying the other thing. Don't worry. Those who are slandering you, they're going to go before a judge, the ultimate judge, and God is going to take care of them. See, no worries means that we partner with God and agree to listen only to his voice. If he says we are blessed, we accept it and we live like we are blessed. Can you live like you are blessed in spite of your circumstances? I believe you can. You know why? Because you can get up in the morning and be in a terrible relationship and you can say, God, I'm going to honor you today in spite of this relationship. God, I'm going to go to work today in spite of that supervisor that's giving me hell. Don't worry, they're giving you hell, but they might end up in hell because they're not honoring God. So don't stress that. Yeah, do whatever you need to do. Contact whoever you need to contact. Stand up for your rights, but recognize that ultimately every person will stand before God. That's why you and I can say, I'm not going to worry. Yeah, I'm going to get on my knees. I'm going to cry before God. I'm going to ask God to do justice. I'm going to speak to whoever I have to speak to. But ultimately, the Bible says it is God that moves the king's heart. What does that mean? That people might be making arbitrary decisions. They might feel that they have a little bit of power and they can do as they please. But God is the all powerful. Yeah, they might have some power, but God is the all powerful. You know what Abraham Lincoln said? That if you want to see, if you want to test a person, if you want to see if a person is a person of integrity, give them power. And you're going to see how they act once they have power. What we need to understand, though, is that we're not at the mercy of these individuals. We are at the mercy of God. You and I are not at the mercy of the devil. You and I are not at the mercy of the person saying that they're casting spells upon us. You and I are not at the mercy of our husband or our wife. No, we are at the mercy of God. Now, if any of those individuals is hurting you, well, there are laws, right? The Bible says that we should seek authority because God has made authority figures to help us in the day of evil. But again, ultimately, you and I don't have to live a life of worry because we have God that backs us up. We have the Lord, the sovereign God of the universe that says, I will take care of you. In a time of drought, like he said to Jeremiah, we will be like a tree planted along a river bank with its roots reaching deep into the water, not bothered by long months of drought. You're concerned about a recession? God is going to take care of you in the recession. You're concerned about losing your job? God is going to take care of you even if you lose your job. But this is the problem. Are you trusting in God? Are you seeking God? Are you honoring God? Or are you just paying lip service to God? Oh, I love Jesus. But you do nothing with your life that demonstrates that you love Jesus. Don't live like that. If you love Jesus, show that you love him by the way you speak, by the way you act, by the way you think. Because ultimately, he knows who loves him and who doesn't love him. Again, we will be judged by the words we speak and by the actions that we commit. So honor God at all times, morning, noon, and night. Ask the Lord to lead your steps, to help you not to worry, to be focused upon him. There was a man by the name of George Mueller. And you can, you can look this up. George Mueller, when he was a young man, oh, he did as he pleased. 
He ran with the wrong crowd, even when he was in Bible college. He, 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 he sowed, as we say, some wild oats. He did whatever he wanted to do until, until he met the Savior, Jesus Christ. And his heart was changed. And he became a man of integrity. He began to, to seek the Lord. And, he, and the Lord put in his heart that he couldn't just seek God. See, this is the problem. It's not just a matter of you praying and, and doing things for God at home. At some point, you have to lend yourself to the service of God, whatever that might look like. Ask God to show you what does he want you to do. So George Mueller decided to open an orphanage. And he uh, had hundreds of children in the orphanage. But guess what? Sometimes there would be no food because he refused to ask anyone for anything. He would only bring it before God. Isn't that something? <laughs> no worries, right? Bring it before God. What do you and I do? We bring it before everybody and then God last. No, no, no. Your troubles should come before God first. Bring it to God. Ask God to guide your steps. So this is what occurred with George Mueller. I got this from Christianity.com and it's part of his biography. It says, and I quote, The children are dressed and ready for school, but there is no food for them to eat. The house mother of the orphanage informed George Mueller. George asked her to take the 300 children, imagine 300 children, into the dining room and have them sit at the tables. He thanked God for the food and waited. He knew God would provide food for them as he always did. Within minutes, a baker knocked on the door. Mr. Mueller, he said, last night I could not sleep. Somehow I knew that you would need bread this morning. I got up and baked three batches for you. I will bring it in. Isn't that fantastic? But he goes on. Soon, there was another knock at the door. It was the milkman. His cart had broken down in front of the orphanage. The milk would spoil by the time the wheel was fixed. He asked George if he could use some free milk. George smiled as the milkman brought in 10 large cans of milk. It was just enough for the 300 thirsty children. Can we praise God for that? Could you imagine? Could you imagine having this task in your heart, but not having the means to accomplish what God has put upon your heart? You know what that means, right? That you can't worry about it. You got to give it to God and you have to say, God, if you, if you entered me into this marriage, then you are going to help me get through this marriage. Now, God might lead you in another direction, right? I don't advocate divorce. God knows what's best. You follow God's lead. If God walked you into a job like he did to me 10 years ago into a particular, the particular place where I work, I saw the filthy, dirty building, and I've been working there for the past 10 years, God will remove me from that place when he says, I need to go. No one else can because I'm there to do God's work. God's work being work as a social worker and honor those children who need my help for the time. What you need to understand is if God has given you a task, God is the one that is going to help you to fulfill that task. You don't have to worry. No worries. God put you somewhere. God is going to take care of you in that place because it is God that is taking care of you. Don't be stressed. And I know I, I say that and I've been stressed. But, but I guess I'm preaching to myself also. What we need to understand is that it is God that informs every day of our lives. We cannot allow ourselves to be led by the dynamics of this world, by the movements of this world, by this person walking hard and, and thinking that they're all that. No, 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 no. Again. It is God that guides our steps. George Mueller recognized that he didn't have to depend on any man, that if God had called him to a task, God had to provide for that task. And that is exactly what God is doing with you and with me. Turn in your Bibles to Matthew chapter 6. I will give you a moment to get there. Matthew chapter 6. And it's funny because I prepared this yesterday and this morning, Dr. Charles Stanley was preaching from, from this and say, okay, thank you, Lord. That's, that's helpful to me. 
Matthew chapter 6, beginning in verse 24. Jesus is speaking. And he begins to say, No one can serve two masters. Can't do it. For you will hate one and love the other. You will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and be enslaved to money. Whew. Some people don't like that. You know what? Because money rules them. They are a slave to money. And sometimes they just don't have any. And so what they think about is money, 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 and how to make money and how to get more money and how I need two jobs and three jobs and four jobs. And they have these things and they still have no money. What's that about? You know what that's about? That you do not have the blessing of God in your life because you have made money your master instead of God being your master. Change that. Ask God to help you to use money appropriately, not for you to be used by money. Money should be your slave, that you would use it to fulfill your basic needs and help other individuals, but not that you're constantly looking for money and your credit card bills are sky high because you don't know how to manage it. I know people that make very little money and they're fiscally responsible. All their needs are met. And then I know people that husband and wife, they have two jobs, three jobs, four jobs, and they can't make ends meet because they're frivolous with their money. That's not what God is calling us to do. Remember, no worries. But sometimes you worry yourself and I worry myself because we're doing the wrong thing with the money that has been allotted to us. So Jesus is saying, hey, you can't serve two masters. You're going to love one or you're going to hate the other. You just, it just, there's just no way. You cannot have divided loyalties. He goes on to say in verse 25. Matthew chapter 6, verse 25. That is why I tell you not to worry about everyday life, whether you have enough food and drink or enough clothes to wear. Isn't life more than food and your body more than clothing? And that's a rhetorical question. Obviously, yes. Yes, yes, yes. My life is more important than the food I eat. And the fact that I have a body is more important than the clothing I wear. See, this is our problem. We have made a want, a need. See, God says, and I said it in the beginning of the sermon, that if you delight yourself in him, he's going to give you the desires of your heart, right? And here, God is saying that he's going to meet all of our needs. But we want our wants met, not just our needs. So, for example, I want a new car. But do you need a new car? And when you cannot afford a new car, well, you buy a used car, right? It's still going to get you from point A to point B. We have made our wants, our masters, rather than thanking God for fulfilling all of our needs. You ate this morning? Probably. You're going to eat today? Probably. And if you don't have, well, you know where you can get. This is our problem. That we want to say that God has not fulfilled what I wanted, when in reality, it's because it's not something that I needed. God promises right here, don't worry, verse 25, whether you have enough food and drink or enough clothes to wear, isn't life more than food in your body, more than clothing? Verse 26, look at the birds. They don't plant or harvest or store food in barns. Why? Because your heavenly father feeds them. And then he says, and aren't you more valuable to him than they are? Again, it's a rhetorical question. The answer is yes, you are more valuable to God than the birds are. Verse 27, can all your worries add a single moment to your life? No, but they can take moments away from your life, as you and I know. The more you worry, the less you live, the less you enjoy your life. As a matter of fact, you, be you can begin to hate your life when you continue to worry and worry and worry. It's clear, and studies have shown that stress is a killer. And when you allow stress to take over you, well, you know what? You're in a bad condition. Go down to verse 30. If God cares so wonderfully for wildflowers that are here today and thrown into the fire tomorrow, he will certainly care for you. And then he adds, why do you have so little faith? Do you know that little faith dishonors God? God doesn't want you to be faithless. God wants you to be focused upon him and to say, my needs are going to be met because God has promised to meet my needs. But at the same time, I'm going to honor God with everything that I have. Yeah, when was the last time you honored God with your goods? 
that maybe a neighbor was in need and you took some food to your neighbor. Or instead of spending money frivolously, you made a donation to this ministry, open door ministries, or to other ministries. It doesn't have to be here. Give as the Lord has given to you. But you know what we do? As I said earlier, we hoard. We hold on to it. Oh, I'm holding on to this for, uh, for a rainy day. And guess what? The rainy day comes and you don't even have for the rainy day. God is telling us, why do you have so little faith? And then verse 31, Jesus goes on. So don't worry about these things saying, what will we eat? What will we drink? What will we wear? Our basic needs he's talking about. Verse 32, these things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers. You know what he's saying, right? If you're always focused on money and on clothing and on things, then you're an unbeliever. You are dishonoring God by those desires that really are frivolous desires rather than seeking the things of God. These things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers, but your heavenly father already knows all your needs. And then he says, seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously. You know what that means? Do good to your neighbor. Stop slandering people. Stop having people's names in your mouth and honor God. And he will give you everything you need. Verse 34. So don't worry about tomorrow. Again. No worries. Don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring its own worries. You don't know if you're going to make it or not, but tomorrow is going to bring whatever is going to bring. Today's trouble is enough for today. Today's concern is enough for today. So Jesus is not saying don't plan. Yeah, plan, of course. Some are planning for retirement. Some are planning for moving. Some, some are planning for whatever you're planning for. Hey, good. Plan for all of those things. But you cannot get consumed with the plan. Ask God to guide your steps, to speak to you, to show you what is best, and watch God come through. So again, no worries. As Dr. Tony Evans said, today is the tomorrow that you were worried about yesterday, and yet you made it. Congratulations. Psalm 37, 4, delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Stop harping on what you don't have and thank God for what you do have. Ask the Lord to guide your steps, to give you wisdom and understanding, to show you to use the little money you have. And I know a God that can stretch out your little to a huge amount. And I know a God that can take your huge amount and make it nothing when you depend upon yourself. So seek God and watch God work. So again, seek the kingdom of God above all else. And live righteously. And he will give you everything you need. So don't worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow will bring its own worries. Today's trouble is enough for today. God bless you all. Remember, no worries. If you need prayer for any reason, you can just put it here on the side, on the chat. And I'm going to pray for you. That the Lord would guide your steps and help you to stop worrying. But also show you to focus on the right things. Praise the Lord. And uh, I am thinking about Thursday evenings, going back to our, uh, or beginning again, our Bible studies. If you are interested in that, just please put that in the chat. If that's something that you would like to continue to do so that we can begin that on um, this Thursday. And I'm thinking that I will do it just in, like in this forum on Facebook Live so that uh People would be able to write into the chat, and we don't need to 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 see other uh, individuals. Unfortunately, you have to see my face, but we can then focus on what's there. I would read out questions or, or comments, and it'll be interactive in that way. So, if you are interested in that, please let me know, and we will be doing that. Our sister Lauren says, "Please pray for my family and myself." Absolutely, we will. We will pray that the Lord have mercy and, and guide you and strengthen you and uh, provide, provide what he knows is best and exactly what you need because God, our God is a providing God. Amen. The Lee says to please pray for Heidi for her pain that God will 
lessen her pain or help her with her pain. Amen. Yes, may the Lord have mercy uh, upon her. Um, if we do the Bible studies, it'll be Thursdays at 6.30 in the evening, like we did last time. Amen. So I have a couple of people who say they, they are interested and they can't wait. Okay, fantastic. That sounds good. We're also going to be praying for our sister Lillian uh, Jenkins. May the Lord bless her and guide her. Some of you met her here in my home, I believe last summer, and she has participated in some of our, our classes. Our sister Marisol lets us know that uh, she's um, suffering from cancer and going through a hard time right now. And so she needs God to strengthen her. And so we're going to pray for our sister Lillian Jenkins that the Lord would have mercy upon her, lead her steps, bless her, give her peace. That's really, really important. Sometimes we forget that people need peace. The Bible says that we are all appointed to die at some point. We don't want to talk about that. Well, you know what? Talk about it. And we also need to understand that God, that God is the one that ushers us into his presence. Some people are so tired of suffering in this world that when it's time to go, they're ready because they need to rest. We're going to pray for our dear sister Lillian, that the Lord will have mercy upon her body, but also have mercy upon her soul. And provide what is best. Amen. My sister Melody asked for prayer for our nation, for the pastor, yeah, for myself. I certainly pray for persons on this chat, for friends and family, and for everyone. And she says she's interested in the Bible study. Yes, fantastic, fantastic. Maria asked for prayer for my herself and her family and those in need. Amen. We're gonna pray for all of these things. I need prayer for this course that I'm taking. As soon as I get off of here, I'm gonna be doing some assignments, and I will have finished another class, God willing, by this Friday. Keep me in your prayers as I work on my doctorate. It's been pretty intense. I must say I have been stressed, not by that, but by the job, and that also. Um, everything has come together, but I praise God. What Somebody once told me that the Lord made me strong enough to take everything that comes, and I believe that. So, But pray that the Lord will continue to give me strength. Amen. My sister Linda asked for prayer for herself and for her family. Yes, Marcos asked for prayer for protection for him on the road. You better not be texting while you're driving. <laughs> God bless you. Yes, so he's a long haul driver. So he's driving up and down all the time. We pray that God have mercy upon him. Amen. We're going to pray for all of these things and thank God for answering our prayers. Remember, no worries. The Lord is the one that meets our needs. We thank you, Father, for your love and for your mercy for your holiness and for your protection, for your goodness, my God, because you are good. Whether things work out for me or not, you are good, my Lord. Father, we praise and honor and glorify your holy name. Father, look at our sister Judy. She's asked for prayers for her mother with dementia. My God, that you have mercy upon her, that you bring healing and sustaining power, my God. For our sister Lillian, my Lord, that you guide her by your Holy Spirit, my Lord. Father, that you strengthen her, Lord, you know, my God, as she gets closer to your presence, the thoughts that are in her mind, my Lord, give her peace, my God, that she would be able to comfort those who are around her at this time, my Savior. Father, bless everyone that has been here listening to this sermon. Guide them by your Holy Spirit. The Bible study beginning on Thursday night, if you allow it to occur, let it be for your honor and for your glory, my God. For myself and for my family, my Lord, that you would lead us by your Holy Spirit, that you would strengthen us, my Lord. Father, that you, my Lord, would be in charge, Father, of this nation. Father, you know what's going to happen. You know what's best. Guide us by your Holy Spirit. Help those individuals, my God, Lord, who proclaim their racism, my Lord, even as they say they're defending their own race. No, Lord. No, Father, no. You accept no discrimination. You accept no racism, my Lord. Let us truly honor each other as human beings, my God, not of any particular race or ethnicity, my God, but that we would seek you as one body, where your word says that there is no Greek and there is no Jew, there's no man, there's no woman, but we are one in Christ, my God. Let us seek you as one in Christ, my Lord. Lead us by your Holy Spirit and strengthen us with your grace. Thank you, my Lord. I thank you for having allowed me to preach this word. Let it have been for your honor and for your glory. Amen, Lord, and amen. So God bless you all. Uh, Thursday night at 6.30, um, God willing, we will be just like this on Facebook um, live so that you can write in um, comments and questions and so on. Uh, I think that'll be a little bit easier.
Um, also, it opens up the door for many other people to be uh, involved. And so we praise God um, for that. Um, also, we thank the Lord for his love and for his mercy. I'm thinking that what we're going to be doing is we're going to be walking with Jesus on Thursday nights. We're going to be discussing how he dealt with situations, how he walked um, as he grew closer to his impending death, how he lived his life. We're probably going to be in the book of John. He was walking with Jesus through the seven miracles that he did in that book. Amen. So God bless you all. I pray that the Lord would favor you with his mighty presence. Uh, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Amen and amen.